Hey everybody, it's Prince of Queens, and I'm going to be telling the story about feminist theater in New York City because people wanted to hear it. I was alluding to it in my social justice play video from last week or whenever, and some people really liked it, in particular a new patron of mine, and he wanted to hear things that were similar. And I did mention that I have this crazy feminist story, and it's actually crazier. So here goes. All right. I graduated college in 2004, and I was 22. And I went to school in Manhattan, New York City. And immediately after graduating, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do with myself. I, I worked on my friend's play, doing audio production, and that was an experience that I talked about in the other video. I kind of hated it. Um, not working with him, just the, th the theater scene. And the other experience with the theater scene that I really, really hated was this. I went on a two-week playwriting, theater, acting, production retreat Thing at Bard College. I'm going to show some photos of Bard College. It's in upstate New York. It's actually a really, really beautiful place. Honestly, if I were to get some master's degree in some sort of fine arts or something, I would maybe consider going there because it's just a really, really amazingly beautiful campus that has all these sculptures and really, really beautiful kind of parks and stuff within the campus. And you can just run around and have fun. And we did kind of in between actually working really, really hard. So I was invited by this woman who was my teacher. Now she wasn't a cool teacher. I didn't actually like this woman very much. Uh, she was actually really, really boring. She was my history of theater part two teacher and she was not that interesting. And somehow she made the invitation sound like I had been recommended, but really I wasn't. I was to be there as a student. And that meant that either I could pay for a thousand dollars to be there and it would be like room and a bit of the food that we didn't have. Like, I think that they didn't provide lunch. I think we had to get it ourselves but they did give us dinner. Either I could pay $1,000 or I could pay $500, which I chose to do, but then I had to clean dishes. But I thought that everybody at the retreat had some sort of arrangement that was kind of like that. Like I didn't understand that that was specific to the younger people that were invited until I was literally on the bus. And then I figured out that it was actually a theater retreat for women specifically. It was to manifest the work of female writers and directors. And it was this very feminist focused thing. And they got to be there for free and they got to basically just do whatever they want unless they were hired actors that were starring in productions that were being worked on and then they had to go to rehearsal but there were playwrights who were there just to kind of revise their plays and then they had readings at the end and they got to do whatever they want and just chill out there well the students had to clean the dishes and we were basically paying for them to be there and i didn't understand that there was that dichotomy between the two types of people that were there and let me tell you if it doesn't already sound like we were second-class citizens, we were second-class citizens. The professionals that were there to, you know, they had they had basically like this grant to be there. They would barely even look at us. They treated us like we were servants, and it was this really embarrassing thing. But the thing is this. I was an extremely social kind of... I guess, articulate, well-spoken young man that was not afraid of anybody. So even on the bus on the way over, I was talking to some of the professionals and they asked me what I was doing. And I said that I was a playwright and they sort of had a little bit of a friendship with me. And then we figured out that I was actually a student playwright and that it was this different thing. <laughs> but some of them still liked me, even though a lot of the other ones kind of 
turn their nose up at me. Now, in fairness to that general attitude, it was true that I was the only student that was really serious. I had written a full-length play that I was revising, and that's why I was there. That's why I went on the whole thing, because I knew that if I got out of, you know, Brooklyn, where everything is really busy all the time and everything is really chaotic, I could just chill out and revise this play, and I would get to do a reading of it at the end of the two weeks. And I figured that that would be a good process for me to make sure my first full-length play that I wanted to produce was actually really good. So I definitely had a real specific person uh, purpose for me to be there as an individual. But the other students didn't. They were just kind of there. Like, they didn't have anything better to do. And so they forced me to take some acting class, which was actually a really, really good acting class. It was the best acting class I've ever taken in my life. And I've taken a lot of acting classes. I don't like acting. I think it is tedious. I like being myself and I like writing other characters and I, I will potentially act as characters that I have written, but I know my limitations and one of the things I'm not particularly good at doing is acting. And it's also just not what I was interested in, but they were pretty much forcing me to do it. It was this really weird situation. I don't want to get into that all that much, but eventually after a week, I quit the acting thing. I just stopped doing, and maybe it wasn't a week, maybe it was the, the, the last five days of the retreat, I just um, worked on my play at my leisure because the acting was really exhausting. We had to get there by, I believe, 9 a.m. every morning or something and then come home and maybe like um, clean a little bit. And I uh, got, it was this really exhausting process. Like it, it, it left me drained at the end of the day because there was dinner. We had to do dinner cleanup and I just felt like I needed to actually have time to rewrite my play. That's what I was there for. And there were these really kind of strange professionals. There was this woman that I made friends with who was Romanian, and she was actually quite cool. She was a Romanian immigrant that wrote this really interesting play that I ended up enjoying. But she had this gay guy who was her friend who was there who was really, really rude to me. And it was like he was jealous a little bit that I was friends with her. I think that she was a little bit of a maybe a hot item in the New York theater scene. And it bugged him that this weird Romanian immigrant woman thought I was interesting and he resented it. So he was always rude to me the whole week. But what was really strange is that the Romanian immigrant didn't get a whole lot of attention at the retreat. What happened was that there was a few other people who got all the attention. Like there was this woman who wrote a play called, and I quote, my Israeli play. That was the name of it. And for some reason, she was this big deal. And the Romanian woman didn't like her. She thought that she was, I don't know, tokenizing herself. The Romanian woman definitely wrote a play that was about uh, an immigrant and stuff. But it was really, it was real. It was about her experience. And it was actually a really, really good plot. It was about this Russian mob boss that hired a Romanian lady to be his housekeeper or something, but she was actually really smart and she exposed him for being corrupt or some crazy thing like that. It was a good play. It was just like something that you would want to watch, but people didn't really care all that much about this woman's play, but they did care about the My Israeli play. And there were also these donors who were these rich white women who I guess were some of the other people that subsidized this little, you know, feminist kind of communist -y retreat thing. You have to keep in mind that a lot of the New York theater scene or any theater scene in general is largely based around grants and the people who are giving money for the grants are largely ideologically driven. There's not a whole lot of actually profitable theater in the world <laughs> anymore. So it's going to be a lot of these types of feminist and Marxist people that you're going to encounter. So 
Some of them are these weird, rich, white ladies who, I guess, are probably spending their husband's money to subsidize feminist theater. And they would hang out, and they were kind of annoying and just not very smart. Uh, one of the things that happened was that there was a... Uh, the, the, these two young women who were white came and did a performance of the play that they were performing in New York City. And it had, like, one un-PC joke in it. They were imitating some old New, Jer New Jersey ladies that were sitting on a stoop. I guess this is the type of thing that, you know, their childhood was like. So they had these, these rude old New Jersey ladies. And one of the things that she said was, God, you know, these Haitians, these Haitian people, they, these Haitian people... They look black, but they think they're French. What's going on with that? Yeah, I don't know why they think they're French. But they act black. Oh, yeah, they act really black. And um, people laughed at the joke. It seemed funny to people because there's a lot of Haitian immigrants and they're black and they speak French and they are known to commit a lot of violent crime in the New York City, New Jersey area. So she said that, but then there was like this Haitian kid that was there who observed the play that I don't know why they were at Bard College. They actually technically weren't part of the theater program, but the, it's a huge university and the, the, um, the, the showing of the play was open to everybody. So there was a question and answer period and the Haitian person raised their hand and they weren't upset. It was weird. They kind of had a very nuanced thing just saying like, oh, this didn't bother me, but I think that there's some people that I know who would be offended by that or something like that. And then the old white ladies seriously spent like two hours while we were doing the dishes, apparently, um, talking about how horribly offensive it was that those girls had had that in their play. Um, I didn't really hear them, but my friend who I, she, she heard them say it and she was like, oh my God, it was so irritating having to clean out the kitchen with those ladies sitting there talking about how offended they were for hours. It was ridiculous. So there was that. And another thing to keep in mind was that there was this, big production that was being worked upon that was a uh it was a rendition of i think it was the orpheus myth and it was a musical thing and it had all these racial minorities in it as actresses and they were all singing now granted some of them were really good they were really talented and um i became friends with two of them i really liked them actually um these two black girls they're just really talented people like, I, I can totally understand why I would want them singing in a play. They were quite good. But it was headed by this woman who runs a theater in New York City called Here. And Here is a downtown production company. You could Google it. It probably still exists. And it was well known for being the place that young theater people could get their productions produced at and maybe have it go for like a week or something and they were constantly looking for new talent that was their thing but the thing is is that the woman who ran the place was also a director and she had her you know special play thing and um it wasn't as big of a deal as I think that she wanted it to be. I mean, the actors were really good, but ultimately, overall, it just wasn't that engaging of a play. It just wasn't that interesting. So, yeah, um, then at the end of the two weeks, we had the student readings. So, oh, that, that's what we have to keep in mind. Within the last two or three days, all of the performances happened, and... You know, like I, I went and I saw her production of her musical rendition of Orpheus and I saw the Romanian ladies play and maybe one or two other things. And then we had the reading of my play. And 
for whatever reason, I think because I had made friends with a number of the staff, not staff, but the, the, the professionals, and they started saying that, you know, this Prince kid, he's actually pretty interesting. We should maybe go see his play. And my play was a kind of a cool concept. It was about kids that were at cancer camp, except for they're, they're the bad kids, and then kids start dying, and it becomes a murder mystery. And so everybody was like, oh, that actually sounds kind of interesting. So I actually ended up kind of filling the room uh, full of people and a lot of the professionals came and they really liked it. They were laughing at all the jokes and they got really engaged and everybody was really into it. Oh, and I got this guy who's actually now probably internationally famous, certainly very nationally famous in theater to read in it. Um, some guy that I made friends with who was a professional and he really liked it. Everybody really liked it. And it was kind of like the runaway hit of the whole thing, to be perfectly honest. And I, I, I sounds very egotistical for me to say this, but you know, hey, that was, I was 22 then, that was 14 years ago. And it was this very strange thing where that was the thing that everybody was talking about. And after my reading, all of the professionals wanted to talk to me. It was this weird thing where they were like, oh, you can sit at our table this this dinner. And I was like, okay. But I still, you know, hung out with the students because I don't want to abandon my people <laughs> entirely. And the students told me that they felt jealous of me because I was getting attention from the professionals and they were treating me well. It, it felt actually really, it made me feel dirty. It made me feel very strange. Um... But here's the point of this story. I did not get a single door open to me as a result of that. It was strange. Somebody should have come up to me. Like, looking back on it, at the time, I thought that maybe I should be trying a little bit harder and I should, you know send my play to more places and try hard to get it produced. No, that wasn't the issue. There should have been one of the producers or directors or professionals should have set me up. They should have said, that woman from here, she, said, she should have said, I want to do a reading of your play at my theater so that we can potentially get it into production. And had I been a young woman, or a racial minority, or in particular both, I'm about 99% positive that would have happened. What I think really happened is that I was at a feminist retreat thing where they were trying to harness the abilities and work and talent of women. They were trying to put more women in the theater scene. They were doing everything they can to help female directors and writers get their work out there. But there I was, 22 years old, little white boy, right out of college, and I upstaged them all. And some of them were totally cool with it. Some of the actors like totally wanted to know, totally wanted to know me, and even some of the playwrights wanted to be my friend. But the people who could have opened doors for me Apparently, they were just thinking to themselves, oh, no, another smart, capable white boy that everybody likes. Let's just pretend he doesn't exist. That left a bad taste in my mouth.